good models that we see in northern Europe, in Germany, in Austria, in Belgium, in Switzerland. So I'll do a very small quiz here. Ten years back, out of hundred mobile phones that Indians used, we used in India, how many were imported? I think most of you are correct. Ninety-nine percent. I would like to ask a question regarding the bullet train. When can we see the first bullet train? And what are all the plans which we are going to do it to make it across India? Thank you. Excellent. It's so close to my heart. It's so close to our Prime Minister's heart. Thank you for asking this. Hyperloop has very good potential. There is a very dedicated, energetic team of youngsters working in IIT Madras. I am the 72nd member of that. The cost per came. GB was about 200 rupees cost of data. So your point about affordability. Today it is just about 14 rupees. Before yesterday I posted the first woman woman loco pilot. Did you, how many of you saw that? You saw that? You feel pride? What's your name? Rule section. Rather. Happy with the pace? Very nice, sir. Very nice. Good. Very nice. And the payments are also very good. <laughs> <laughs> That's the <a> main. <laughs>
take out the most, I mean, the biggest risk in any government contract. And how did we, when we attempted that thing, that target, we found that payment risk is the biggest, biggest risk in any contract. How did we solve it? Today, in most of the railway contracts, if the payment is not done within 30 days of the invoice, then the government will pay a interest to you. Can you believe that? <laughs> Can you believe that? That's unheard of in any government contract. But that, is, that has started happening. The psychological impact it has on the people who are managing the contract is, if I have to pay interest, then my job is gone. Hyperloop has very good potential. There is a very dedicated, energetic team of youngsters working in IIT Madras. I am the 72nd member of that team <laughs> and we are pushing very hard on creating some of those technologies. Yes, it is about five, seven, eight years away if you talk realistically, but I believe, sincerely believe that it has very good future. One. Two, regarding the Bharat OS, Yes, excellent initiative taken by one of the startups associated with IIT Madras and time to ruggedize it, time to make sure that it can be scaled up and it can be used in at least the secure environments where we need absolutely clear uh, control over the operating system. For a very long period, for a very almost like four or five decades, the investment that was happening in railways was very small. 2014 onwards, investment started picking up. From something like 20,000 crore, it increased to 40,000 crore, then it increased to 80,000 crore, then it increased to a lakh and 11,000 crore, then it got increased to 1,59,000 crore. And this year's budget, budget of 23, the capital investment in railways has been allocation is 2,41,000 crore. That's historic. And that's going to fundamentally change the productivity of India's economy. What are we doing with it? First, increasing the capacity, especially at the bottlenecks. We have identified about 70 bottlenecks which need to be seriously where the capacity needs to be seriously increased over the coming two to three years. Actually, uh, before that, within the next, next two years. Second, increasing the rolling stock. So, we have placed orders for 85,000 wagons for 1,200 locomotives. And now, on an average, we will be doing, we will be procuring about 1,200, 1,000 plus locomotives. Third, changing the passenger experience. Having new stations built, 1,275 stations we are taking up. Already work has started on about 100 of them. And many of these stations, if you see the YouTube and other social media posts, you'll find that these stations are being developed at a totally new scale, totally new type of design. Fourth, new trains, new, new design of trains, totally new passenger experience. So the Vande Bharat train, as you are aware, has taken the country by storm and people are really, really appreciating the train's design. The noise level inside Vande Bharat train is 100 times less than the noise level inside a aeroplane. That's the beauty of the design. The train reaches 0 to 100 in 52 seconds, whereas every comparable train will do that 0 to 100 pick up or acceleration in like 55 seconds or 56 or 60 seconds. That's the beauty of design. If you stand in the train, you will feel as if you are standing in this hall. Absolutely no vibrations, no shaking, no jerks. That's the beauty of the design. I wish I had brought that presentation. I didn't know the format is this. I thought this format was more like that CEO's forum when we did this CIA partnership forum last time. So I didn't bring that presentation. Otherwise, if you see that, it's amazing. And the entire train has been designed in India by our own engineers, by our own people. I wanted to show you one small 
small little video, maybe some of you might have seen this if you have not seen, take a look at this. When the train is being tested at 180 kilometers per hour, this is the glass of water. Can you see this glass of water? This glass of water is standing placed on the driver's cabin and the water doesn't spill, the glass doesn't shake. At 180 kmph, existing tracks, not the uh, still to be made excellent new tracks. That's the beauty of this design. And all this is possible because our Prime Minister has given us that vision that we start believing in our own talent, develop things, we'll make mistakes, learn from those mistakes, iterate and keep developing new things. Day before yesterday, I posted the first woman, woman loco pilot. Did you, how many of you saw that? You saw that? You feel pride? What's your name? How do you feel about it? So, two women loco pilots running the Vande Bharat train at 180 kmph. Doesn't it make you feel proud of the country? <laughs> That's the change which is happening, friends. So, I'll do a very small quiz here. Ten years back, out of 100 mobile phones that Indians used, we used in India, how many were imported? I think most of you are correct, 99%. Today, out of the 100 phones that we use in India, how many are made in India? Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. 99%. <laughs> That's the change. 99% imported versus 99% made in India. And now the ecosystem is also shifting to the country. So that's where the demand is. Today, electronics manufacturing is close to $87 billion industry in the country. Mobile phone manufacturing, I think we are already, India is already number two in terms of manufacturing, number three in terms of exports. This year, the mobile phone export will be touching something like 9.5 to 10 billion US. The cost per GB was about 200 rupees cost of data. So your point about affordability. Today it is just about 14 rupees. So it has come down almost 10, one tenth of the less than that about uh, one seventh of the cost which was earlier there. But our focus is, of course, make in India very clearly. Any international player who would like to use this huge network as a big source of demand for them is welcome. We'll make sure that you get all the facilities that are needed and come make in India. Second, design in India. Again, because there is a large talent pool available in the country, use this talent pool and design it in India for India, for the world. That's the philosophy we are uh, following on the collaborations. The good models that we see in Northern Europe, in Germany, in Austria, in Belgium, in Switzerland, it's basically drawing all those good elements from wherever we can learn. Our focus is what? Our focus is increase the railway's carrying capacity significantly. So you must have seen the numbers. In 2022-23, uh, sorry, 2021-22, we added close to 184 million tons of additional carbon.